Hey everyone, welcome back. As you know, or if you've been following along, um, you may know that I am an avid collector of my beauty trash, my beauty empties. This is not a new practice in the beauty content world, but it is a practice that I find especially insightful for me as a beauty consumer and also as a content creator. I've talked about this at length in the past, but for me, it's a really important way of being able to review products and be um, effective at reviewing products, but also to confront and really contend with the amount of waste we produce as beauty consumers, some of which is recyclable and some of which is not. Something I think about a lot is that no matter how much we try to recycle, recycling is a very flawed system, especially in the US, our waste management is terrible. And as long as we are basically producing plastics, um, they are going to end up in the landfill. They're just not all going to get recycled. I think that constant confrontation with this question of waste is an important one. Even if I don't have individual solutions to a systemic problem, contending with this is an important part of being a thoughtful consumer and person in the world. So I wanna to talk to you about my insights of 2022. I have tracked the number of products, the quantity in terms of the value of products that I've collected um, and also talk about what my most used product categories are and I've got some reviews for you as well. So in 2022, I emptied a total of 177 products. These are skincare, makeup, body care, miscellaneous hair care products all in the beauty and cosmetics category. Those 177 items have a total value of $5,139.50. This is kind of an approximation. Um, sometimes I've rounded up or down depending on the cost of the product, but I try to be as accurate as possible. I also sorted my empties by category, and so I emptied 73 skincare items, 17 makeup items, 42 body care items, 16 hair care items, and 14 lip balms and there were a few other miscellaneous things here and there like beauty tools or cotton rounds, that sort of thing. I revisited my 2021 empties and I had emptied a total of $5,201 worth of products with a total number of 222 items. I thought that was really interesting because the value of the products that I emptied was not that different from 2022, but I did empty fewer products in 2022, meaning the average cost of the item that I emptied was higher. When I look at the category breakdown of the products that I emptied, it totally makes sense that skincare is the top category. There are 73 skincare items that I emptied but I also have the most skincare items. I have a multi-step routine, I have serums, cleansers, eye creams, moisturizers, sunscreens. Within that, there were seven SPFs, and that doesn't include lip balms. I emptied 14 lip balms because I have a lip balm in every bag, in every room in the house, in the car. I am a constant lip balm applier. The body care category is also a little bit, it skews higher because Sean and I share body lotions and body washes. Um, we share bubble bath, we share Epsom salt, we're big bath takers in our house. And I also think it's telling that I only emptied 17 makeup items and most of those were mascaras. Makeup is just not a category that I go through in terms of emptying products very much except for certain essentials like brow gels, mascaras. I emptied a couple of concealers, um, maybe one or two foundations. I think it's really telling that the rate of intake of makeup in my life is much higher than the rate at which makeup is leaving my life. I actually just filmed a huge declutter of my makeup collection. It made me feel not good about myself, but that stuff had to go. Um, I'll share that with you in another video because I have a lot of thoughts about that. But that's all to say, if you are like me and you have tracked your beauty empties, um, you've probably learned a lot about yourself and maybe even surprised yourself in your consumption habits. Um, I would love to hear if you have any insights to share if you've learned anything about yourself in doing this. Um, leave that in the comments below. So let's get into some of the reviews of my final empties of 2022. I um, think I did my last video in October. So these are like my October through 
kind of early January empties. I'm sort of cheating because there are things that I've just recently emptied in the last week here. I'm not gonna go through everything because there's a huge box, but um, let me give you some highlights. Dry shampoo, like I said, this is a category I go through a lot. The Living Proof um, Advanced, or no, Perfect Hair Day Dry Shampoo is my original favorite. I actually like their advanced dry shampoo even more now that they have come out with that. It's more of an amped up version of this. But if you like either of those, I think you'll really love the Rene Furterer Naturia dry shampoo. It's very similar to the Chlorine dry shampoo and I think they have the same parent company. So if you like that, then I do think you'll really like this. It's very lightweight. It makes my hair look and feel cleaner, but it doesn't feel gritty in the hair. It doesn't leave too much residue behind, but it's very effective. I went through quite a few cleansers. So this is the La Roche-Posay um, Micellar Water. It's fantastic, it's really gentle. I use this mostly for getting my eye makeup off, like if I'm wearing mascara, I like to have a separate eye makeup remover. But yeah, it's a great option. It kind of just gets the job done. Then I have two cleansers that I loved. These both made it into my monthly favorites throughout 2022. This is the Sahajan Essential Cleansing Oil. This is a beautiful blend of Ayurvedic ingredients and it's a very effective cleansing oil. It's milky, it has a really lovely scent to it. Um, it is kind of fragrant, so I would say maybe sensitive skins might not enjoy this, but I really loved the cushiony experience of this. And the Clur Gentle Matter Hydrating Cleanser was a beautiful gel cleanser. It was super gentle, but it also felt really plush on the skin. It's not stripping the way some gel cleansers can be. And this actually made it into a roundup I did of hydrating cleansers. I forgot about another cleanser. This is the Naturium Purple Ginseng Cleansing Balm. This is probably my favorite affordable cleansing balm I've tried. It breaks down makeup like that. It is on the thinner side. It melts down as a, from a balm into a thin oil. It breaks down makeup. It just is effective very, very quickly. It's no nonsense and it rinses clean. It doesn't leave a film on your skin. So it's a really great affordable option. I have five serums to talk to you about. Let's start with vitamin C's. The Naturium vitamin C is one that I really fell in love with. It is a L-ascorbic acid vitamin C, but it actually felt like a hydrating serum. It had sort of a light jelly quality to it. It was very hydrating on its own, and I didn't feel like I needed to add something hydrating on top. The Summer Friday CC Me um, is the product I've emptied a couple of times before. It's a vitamin C derivative, so it's a lot gentler than L-ascorbic acid. So if your skin can't tolerate that, it's a great option. It's also a jelly serum texture and very hydrating. Um, I really liked this on days where I wanted something a little bit more sensitive. For example, if I've used retinols the night before, I liked using this in the morning just because it's a little bit more balanced on the skin. I emptied another Dew Skin Deliverance Serum. You guys know I love this. I've talked about it a million times. I do have a discount code for this. It's milky, it's calming, it's hydrating, and it has a touch of niacinamide. Sean actually emptied the Peach and Lily Glass Skin Refining Serum. It's a beautiful hydrating serum. I think this also has a touch of niacinamide. And I did notice while he was using this that his skin was looking really good and bouncy um, and very clear, very luminous, which is um, what it claims to do for your skin. It makes it translucent and luminous. There are also peptides in here. The final serum I emptied is the Make Beauty Lactonic Synchronizing Skin Serum. This is a milky serum. It almost has like a light milky gel quality to it, and it has a bit of lactic acid in it, but it's a very, very gentle exfoliator. It's not harsh at all because it has that plush, cushiony, almost moisturizer texture. I didn't even really notice that it was an exfoliating product. It just seemed to brighten and kind of clarify the complexion. So I think if you have sensitive skin, this might be a nice option. Lactic acid is on the gentler side of AHAs. Okay, I lied, there's one more serum. This is the Emma Lewisham Skin Reset Concentrated Even Skin Tone Serum. This um, came in a beautiful like airless pump package. It felt very, it is luxurious and it felt very luxurious as well. This I think is also a niacinamide based serum, at least that's the most active ingredient in here, but I did find it to be 
kind of clarifying and it did seem to brighten the skin tone overall. Um, it was quite fragranced, so I will say like I noticed it on my skin even after applying it. Um, so if you're sensitive to fragrance, just be aware of that. It has a very expensive, slightly powdery smelling floral scent to it. Finished five moisturizers, um, one of which is Sean's. So let's talk about um, this one first. This was the In Beauty Project 10 plus 10 moisturizer. It was a very um, basic moisturizer, but in a nice way. But it also contained um, vitamin C complex, ceramides, and peptides. It's very well priced for a Sephora brand. I love that they're getting more into that mastige price point. This is unscented. It was a really great no frills moisturizer for daytime or nighttime. It wore beautifully under makeup. A more lightweight moisturizer that I really enjoyed is the Super Egg Sound Renewal Moisturizer. This is a gel cream, and I just think the packaging is so cute. It comes in this little egg shape. It is flat on the bottom, so it stands up, and it's kind of like the Chanel hand cream. You just twist the lid off, and it was a really lightweight, simple moisturizer, great for oily or combo skin types. It was great for me in the summer. That's when I got the most use out of it. Getting into some richer creams, I emptied the Jordan Samuel Skin Moisture Recovery Cream. This is essentially the richest moisturizer in Jordan's line. It's basically a night cream. That's how I used it. It's very ceramide rich. It's very plush and cushiony. And I found this was great for the winter time. And it was also great if I needed a little bit of extra cushion, a little bit of extra something richer when I was using exfoliants or retinoids. This is great over or under retinoids to help buffer some of the potentially irritating effects. So I think if you have normal to dry skin, you'll especially love this. Um, or if you're someone that uses a lot of actives because it does restore the skin barrier. I really enjoyed the St. Jane Hydrating Petal Cream. Um, it is scented, it has that petal scent, but it was so, um, how do I say this? It was like a loose texture for a moisturizer, but it was really rich and emollient. And I kind of liked that. I liked that it was rich and occlusive on the skin without feeling heavy or thick in texture. And lastly, Sean emptied another Pharmacy Honey Halo. He loves this moisturizer. I think he's gone through like three or four of these in the past. And I love this as well. It's ceramide based. It's another one of those great night creams. It's a stiffer texture that melts down into something really cushiony and comforting on the skin. For some body products, we emptied another Bioderma Autoderm Shower Oil. And this was actually the last backup that I have of this. I haven't repurchased it because they raised the price of this from $20 to $30. So it's basically gone up 50% in price. And even though it's always been in a very economical product and it still is considering the volume it's a liter so it's 33.8 ounces um i feel salty about the price raise so i haven't repurchased it and to be honest i have other body products that i have to go through but i do miss having this in my routine it's oily it turns milky it hydrates the skin while you're cleansing so i do i do miss having this and i am still grieving the price raise a couple of body lotions so this is the carrier cream by soft services i've mentioned this before i've mentioned this very recently in my top five brands of 2022. I love this. It's plush, it's cushiony, it sinks in quickly. Similarly, I also love the Josie Marin um, Pro Retinol Body Butter. I actually love all of the body butters and I emptied four different Josie Marin body butters. They are um, a more splurgy item. So this is something that I really like to use like after I shave my legs, when I want a little bit of a nicer um, moisturizer experience. All of the Josie Marin body butters are great. I love this one. I also love the blue one that they came out with earlier this year in that light blue container. A few lip balms I emptied. The Paula's Choice Hyaluronic Acid and Peptide Lip Booster um, is really nice. It's more of like a lip serum and it's a lighter, um, more fluid texture than a traditional lip balm. This is really nice because it sinks in quickly. 
it has anti-aging properties from the peptides and it's also really nice because it is thin to prep the lips for makeup so it kind of plumps up fine lines i do think it's kind of expensive for what it is but i also really enjoy it so you know it's kind of one of those subjective splurge items. I emptied a Make Beauty lip serum in the shade Halo Moon. This is clear with like a touch of light pink. Um, it's my most emptied lip serum shade that they have. You guys know I love these. It has a chubby doe foot applicator. It's basically like a liquefied lip balm. It's very comfortable and bouncy on the lips. It doesn't stick around too long, but I also feel like it leaves moisture over time. For something that does stick around, I love the Fit Glow Beauty Night Lip Serum. You've heard me talk about these before, but I do think they're very expensive. They're very expensive, and I did have to pull out the stopper um, up top to reach all of the product. I will say though, it's so good. It sticks around on the lips. It's like a grippy texture. So I won't be repurchasing it. Um, I think they sent me this one in PR, but I will miss it. And I do miss it, I think about it. Some staple items of makeup. I went through another Peri Para Ink Mascara Fixer, the best mascara primer. A Tower 28 Make Waves Mascara. This was my favorite mascara of 2022. My favorite brow pen of 2022, the Milani Weekend Brow. And this was a ColourPop um, brow pencil, which was great. It was a great affordable option. Um, nothing super special. It Mine is super busted. The um, spoolie fell off. But, you know, it's a great price point. A couple of beauty sponges that were way past their prime. This is a beauty blender and this is the Thrive Cosmetics sponge. This one is denser and firmer, but I really like that it has that angled edge. It's great for um, blending out under the eye, but I also still love and stand by the beauty blender. A couple more skincare bits. I have the Nyad Fractionated Eye Contour Concentrate. It's an eye serum. You guys know I love this. It's the best at depuffing. I actually haven't replaced this yet. I have a new product that I'm testing, which is the, what's it called? The Bio Effect Eye Serum. And I've heard nothing but amazing things about that product. Um, I've heard it's great for depuffing, it's great for anti-aging and fine lines. So we'll see how it holds up to my holy grail. I emptied a Claire's Airy Sunscreen, All Day Airy Sunscreen SPF 50, PA4 Pluses, my favorite SPF of 2022. The last item I used up is the I'm From Honey Mask. I really love I'm From, they're a K-beauty brand. They use a very high concentration of botanical ingredients, or in this case, honey. This mask is 38.7% honey. It has that like rich texture, that rich, it's not sticky, but like that kind of grippy texture and it smells like honey. It's very, very moisturizing. I think all skin types would really like this. And even though it is a looser texture, it sticks to the skin and it kind of stays there as long as you need it to. I also love that it's a mask that doesn't dry down. So you can sort of leave it on as long as you want to. I um, used up, or I guess this got used up, um, one of the Nest New York diffusers, the Reed diffusers. This was the Wild Mint and Eucalyptus. It's a scent I love. It's a very like spa-like scent and I had this in our bathroom. It lasted a really long time. It's a perfect bath shower sort of scent because it is so fresh and green and clean smelling. So that's it. Those are the reviews and that's what my 2022 empties taught me. I will be tracking my empties again in 2023. I'm already doing so. And I'm curious to see um, if my consumption habits change this year at all. I am much more conscious about the waste I produce now than I was when I started creating beauty content a few years ago. And it's definitely something that I'm trying to be more aware of, especially as I receive more PR. I'm in a very privileged position to be able to do that, but it also means that I produce more waste. So it's, it's definitely something that's on my mind all the time. I would love to hear if you have tracked your empties, if there's anything that tracking your empties has taught you. If you think you'll be doing that with me in 2023, let me know. I try to do like a quarterly update on these. So keep an eye out for those and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.